If you've been following my channel for really any amount of time, you'll know that I'm primarily a builder of battleships and battle cruisers. There was at one occasion where I built a railway gun, but in general, it's safe to say that I'm a builder of battleships. Which makes this model, the USS Ticonderoga CB-14, quite an important model because it'll be my first aircraft carrier. I knew I wanted to build a class during World War II so it would fit in with my collection of battleships. I looked for the class that was the latest to serve in World War II. That is the Essex class of carriers. The Midway class missed World War II by 8 days. So I decided that I'd build a long hull version of Essex, which is known as the Ticonderoga subclass with this being the lead ship in that subclass. I also then looked to see which models were available. USS Ticonderoga itself was available. There are a few other ships in this sub-variant of class that you could buy, and that's when I really considered which one had the best disruptive camouflage, as per my opinion, which led me to choose this ship. At this point, if you are getting excited for me to build the ship, I'm afraid you've got quite a long way ahead of you. I'm currently working on the HMS Hood build series. That ship is progressing slowly, and I won't start another ship until I've completed the HMS Hood. It is then my intention to build the USS Alabama. That ship has been sitting on my shelf for a long time, several years now, and it is a model that I do actually want to build, which means that this ship being started is probably several years out. If you have seen any of my ship models, you'll know that I'm a fan of super detail upgrade kits. So of course I bought the best detail upgrade kit for this kit that I could find. That is this Pontos kit. Pontos offers a variety of detail upgrade kits for the USS Ticonderoga. This one is the most complete version. It has included with it a wooden deck. You can, if you so choose, buy the wooden deck independently of the detail upgrade kit. These are the only two kits that I have bought. Now that you've been introduced to the model and my kits, let's take a look inside these boxes. I'll start with the base kit. Let's start by taking a look at the instruction manual. This instruction manual reminds me of pretty much every trumpeter instruction manual. It looks about the same size and detail as that of battleships. I had wondered if building a carrier would be considerably simpler than building a battleship since the superstructure of a carrier is just so much less complicated. But at least by looking at the number of sprues, it doesn't seem as though there are less parts, and certainly there are a lot of aircraft. The construction order appears to be the same as for a battleship. As I say, very standard trumpeter guide. This is quite interesting. It looks like there are internal details for the hangar deck. I wonder if there's an option to have some of these hangar doors open. You can see over here all of these details on the interior. It's not very detailed, but there is some detail. None of this looks particularly complicated. Mm, these don't look very good. Hopefully that will be replaced with photo etch. Lots of Erlikens. Those will definitely be replaced with photo etch. That's going to take some time to do. And here's the superstructure. It's just two steps. That's cute. And then this is, this is the step that's going to be considerably more involved than building a battleship. Many aircraft will need to be constructed. Hmm. So it looks like they're more repetitive steps, like building the aircraft and those kind of things. But the actual construction work does not look very complicated and plastic but I did see quite a lot of areas where there could be improvement with photo etch. So hopefully the detail upgrade kit will address those areas. This is the painting guard. I think this camouflage pattern will look really good on this hull. There's just so much hull to cover and if it was just a monotonous gray, it might be a bit boring. But this, this is interesting. And once again, I mean, the, the, the camouflage pattern on the face of it looks complicated, but there are lots of straight lines. And the side of the ship is, it's flat. So I don't actually think it's going to be too difficult to paint this. Certainly not in the superstructure, there's just so little of it. Especially on this side, it's just a straight line up on an edge over there, and then a few bands. This is marginally more difficult, but even that, there's just not a lot of it. Compared to painting something like the Roma, this is going to be downright easy. Let's take a look at the sprues. problem that I often have with trumpet kits is that there's a lot of flashing. Let's see what we're dealing with here. 
This is the A sprue, it contains bulkheads for the hanger. The B sprue contains more bulkheads for the hanger. The C sprue contains yet more bulkheads. All these components look pretty simple. I'm not seeing much flashing at all. The D sprue also bulkheads some section of deck. These are supports. Hopefully that's replaced with photo etch. E sprue elevators or lifts that looks like a section of funnel or maybe some superstructure rudders these look like bow force tubs that looks like the base of the superstructure some superstructure platforms there's the actual main bridge area and superstructure and yet more platforms and bow force tubs g sprue there are two of these these contain the five inch guns some bow force propellers and such. The H sprue contains more bulkheads, more platforms for AA guns, and I have no idea what those are. All of these plastic components look very simple, very blocky, very basic. I don't see much complexity with these plastic components. Of all the sheets, I'd say this is by far the most complex one. And just from my experience with photo etch, most of this is going to be replaced. Let's take a look at what all those components get built on. The ship's hull comes in three parts, two parts for the upper section, the main length of the hull, and then a small bow section. You can either build the ship as a waterline model using the provided waterline plate, or you can build it as a full hull model. I'll be building this kit with the full hull. This is a very big model. This model is 773 millimeters long, which puts it at roughly the same length as my USS Missouri model. It's also a Panamax ship, so I believe its width will be identical to the Missouri, although it holds this wide section for longer, and obviously it's got a much higher freeboard. So in general, the form of the ship is considerably larger than that of the USS Missouri. Above the hangar deck, bulkheads will be installed, and then on top of the bulkheads there will be the flight deck, which will look something like this, which results in a very large model. There are then five variants of aircraft sprues. These are quite interesting sprues because they have both grey plastic, black plastic and clear plastic. I do appreciate the clear plastic for the canopies. That will be a nice detail. Each sprue only contains one aircraft, but there are four of each type of sprue. Five variants, that means there is a total of 20 aircraft included with this kit. The kit also includes a standard trumpeter display stand and a nameplate. The last item to be provided with the plastic kit is a decal sheet. This includes the ship number, some markings for the deck, and for the aircraft. I think for a base kit, it is quite good. I'm quite happy with the quality of the parts. I'm not too concerned about the detail on them because this is going to be augmented with photo etch. Complexity-wise, it doesn't look like anything near the complexity of a battleship, at least in the plastic. Let's take a look at the Super Detail Upgrade Kit. Let's start with the instruction manual. There are four double-sided sheets, one for the aircraft, one for the deck, and two for the photo etch that will go on the ship. The first page has a summary of what's included in the kit. You can see it is quite extensive. 238 brass pieces alone, 88 resin parts, multiple masking sheets, my nemesis, dry transfer decals, a set of decals for the aircraft, the wooden deck obviously, and 10 sheets of photo etch. Taking a closer look at the photo etch, it looks like it's quite an extensive kit. The amount of detail does look very good. The superstructure, although quite simple, looks very detailed. I'm looking at this mast in particular in the radar. That looks really good. The second page has photo etch that goes below the flight deck. I'm very happy to see this. Here is the replacement photo etch for those rather ugly plastic supports that I said I hoped there would be a replacement photo etch for. Here you can see quite extensive structures that need to be put underneath the flight deck, showing lots of bracings and support beams. That is really good. A lot of nice detail around the funnel. The third page has a lot of detail about the mast construction and the radar. All of this looks quite impressive. I've built similar things like this before. There are a lot of pieces here, but that shouldn't be too difficult. This is quite an interesting radar as well, I'm looking at how that bracing at the back of it is formed. That That's really nice. I also always appreciate it when they replace plastic legs for masts and such with metal. 
that's also going to be very helpful. It just improves the strength of these components so much. The detail here is extensive. I'm really liking how this photo edge looks. And just look at the detail on this mast after it's been fully constructed. That is really good. And even here, the superstructure with everything on it. Such a small piece of superstructure with so much detail on it. The level of detail on this kit seems to be as good as any as I've ever seen. If it goes together well, which typically Pontos kits do, then this is going to turn out very nicely. This page has more radars and anti-aircraft guns. My eyes are immediately drawn to the 20mm Ehrlichens. I don't often see replacement for Ehrlichens done like this. It's very nice to have a brass base. You don't have to cut off and try and salvage the plastic components for the base. So that's very good. And also, it has a brass barrel. It's not a piece of folded photo etch, which is usually the case. That is a very good level of detail. The only problem is that this is a lot of work. There are going to be a lot of 20mm guns, as you saw it in the manual. In fact, let me just see how many there are. Let's do a quick preview to the photo etch. Yeah, this looks like it. Th these are the shields. So what are those? Two, two shields. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 24, 48, plus 6, 12, 60. 60 20 millimeter Ehrlichens. Each Ehrlichen consists of one, the gun, two, the barrel, three, the shield, four, the connector for the shield to the base, five, the base, and six, the wheel. Six times 60 is 360. 360 pieces just to build the Ehrlichens. This is going to take some time. The Beaufort is also very detailed. I'm seeing multiple components there as well. Once again, brass barrels, which you'd expect. There's a replacement resin part. There's the photo etch shield. And how many pieces are on this thing? It's, it's a lot again, but then there just aren't going to be anywhere near as many Beaufort as there are Ehrlichens. Here we can see the shields. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six times three is 18. But then it's four barrels per gun, so that's like 72. So there are actually more barrels of 40 millimeter than there are of 20 millimeter. Aircraft carriers had a lot of light anti-air on them. He'll take a closer look at the photo etch in a bit. Let's just carry on looking at the sheet. See some really nice detail underneath these elevators. Yeah, you can see the steps for construction. This model is going to ooze with photo etch. This is extensive photo etch. I was worried about it being very simple and a quick model to build based on the plastic kit and the general shape of an aircraft carrier, but <laughs> by looking at this photo etch, I can see this is going to take a long time to build. This is very complex photo etch. If anybody is considering doing a build along with me with this photo etch kit, I would not consider it for a first attempt. This is going to be very advanced to build. I haven't seen a, a kit more complex than this. I believe it is within my skill level to do this, but this is not straightforward. But it's a beautiful kit. Let's look at the other pages. This is the sheet for the aircraft. Not a lot of photo etch to go on the aircraft. This looks quite basic, but it is nice. It's nice to have flaps and such for the aircraft. That's nice detail. And then Pontos has also provided a upgrade for the decals. That's appreciated. That's really nice. And then there's a sheet for deck markings. Gives instructions on how to prepare and place the deck. What needs to be removed, where photo etch needs to be applied. Even photo etch going on the deck, wow. Well, then masking sheets, masking sheets for painting. That, that's quite convenient. It'd be nice not to have to make a masking sheet for a change. So those are the instructions. Let's look at the 10 sheets of photo etch. These sheets are marked. This is sheet one. On this sheet, we can see, looks like part of a funnel, parts of radars, 
I have no idea what that is. Looks like some structure that will go underneath the flight deck. She too contains what looks like more sections of bulkhead, some cranes or maybe masts of some variety, support structures. I actually don't really know what I'm looking at. I'm so used to battleships that this doesn't naturally make sense to me where all this is going to go. Sheet 3. These are ammunition storage for Bofors, Bofors shields. Looks like components of the Bofors gun. So this is mostly Bofors and I don't know what this is. Here we have another look at the Erlikan photo etch. Sheet 5 has propellers for the aircraft, landing gear, flaps and such. So this is an aircraft fret. And then we jump to fret 11. Presumably you get different frets for the specific ship that you're building within the SX class. Anyways, this photo etch appears to be for the deck. We then jump to 13. Here I have platforms and railings. I think these go around the flight deck. Not sure what this is all about. Then we have sheet number 14. This looks like more bulkheads. Sheet 15 has some very large pieces on it. I think these go underneath the flight deck and then have all these struts on them. I think this was that section in the manual that I showed you earlier that had a lot of support beams on a piece of photo etch. So this is probably going to go underneath. Yeah, in fact, there you go. You can see this is that replacement part for that plastic that I pointed out that I didn't like. So this goes underneath the flight deck and are the supports to hold it up. The last sheet of photo etch is number 16. More railings, some hatches and platforms or undersides of platforms possibly. I'm not sure. Although the photo etch is extensive, that is not the entirety of this detail upgrade kit. It also includes resin parts. These are bases for the bow force. Looks like the mounts for the 40 millimeter guns. I have no idea what that's all about. Here's a second pack of these bow force bases. This looks like it's part of the gun. I don't know what these very little things are. That's going to be a nightmare to cut off. As I said, this kit is not a basic kit. Don't try this as a first kit. It will, it will not go well. These look like mounted binoculars. And yeah, we have resin 5-inch guns. Let's see, 4, which makes sense. Nice blast bags and associated details. They do look very well molded. Nice resin parts. That's a good replacement over the plastic parts that are included with the kit. That's all of the resin, not too much, but pretty typical what I'd expect to find in resin parts. Usually it is replacement parts for the smaller armament and then components for anti-aircraft guns. Now for the brass parts, these look like masts and booms. That's a ship's siren there as well. These are barrels. These are 40 millimeter barrels for the Bofors. <laughs> Look at how many there are. Oh my word. This is when you know that it's going to take a long time to build when you just see that many barrels. These are the bases and barrels actually for the Urlikans. Look at that. I guess they have to be snapped off the base. It's an interesting way of doing it. I mean, I suppose it makes sense. They can machine this as one part. Still a lot of components. And these are the 5-inch barrels for the secondary. Well, I suppose they're not secondary. Main armament. Well, actually, are they? What, what is the main armament of an aircraft carrier? Surely the main armament is the aircraft, which would then still make these the biggest guns, but a secondary armament, maybe? I don't know. Well, these are dual-purpose guns. So this, I suppose, should really be considered as the heavy AA armament for the ship. So maybe I should just call it that. Heavy anti-aircraft. And the final metal part that's included with this kit is an anchor chain. This looks like the standard anchor chain that is included with all Pontos wooden deck kits. Speaking of, let's take a look at that wooden deck. The wooden deck comes on three sheets, a forward section, a mid section, and an aft section. I might have got the forward and aft sections the wrong way around. We are also provided with the masking sheets as referred to in the manual. These are very welcome. On the decal side of things, we have a wet transfer decal sheet for the aircraft and a dry transfer kit for hull markings and deck markings. 
I don't like dry transfer decals. Why couldn't they just all be wet transfer? Although I suppose if it's going to go on the wooden deck, it would be preferable for it to be a dry transfer. At least it'll be a flat surface, and that will make applying a dry transfer decal considerably easier. Here you can see the range of aircraft carriers in this class that Pontos has detail upgrade kits for. That is the last of it. That is a comprehensive detail upgrade kit. It looks amazing, actually. Looking at these components makes me quite excited to build the ship. But, as I said at the start of this video, you are going to have to wait for that. I don't intend on starting the ship anytime soon, but I will get to it eventually. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you are as excited as I am to start construction on this kit. If you would like to support this channel, then please like and subscribe and watch another video. Perhaps go and watch something from the HMS Hood Build series where you can see me actually working on a ship. Cheers.